Hello everybody, my name is David, and one of the questions I've been asked the most over the years is which tenor ocarina would you recommend, or is there a good place that I could buy a good tenor ocarina? And I've been asked this a lot, literally hundreds if not thousands of times. And after years of researching and collecting ocarinas, I can definitively say that there is no such thing as a tenor ocarina. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay. It's actually a little more complicated than that. Now, I actually made a video about this topic back in 2015, just talking about the different companies around the world and how they classify their ocarina collections. But I decided it's probably due for an update, especially after seeing this video on my timeline recently. The person who made this video is Gina Luciani, and she is a fantastic musician, and I genuinely appreciate everything she's doing with the ocarina, especially with recording for film and TV. So nothing but love, go follow and support everything she's doing. However, the information she shares in her video is not entirely correct, and it's actually not her fault. Gina's video was sponsored by a company called STL Ocarina, and she primarily uses STL Ocarina so it makes sense that she would classify them the way STL does, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. So what's the issue with this? No other ocarina maker in the world categorizes them like this. It's just STL ocarina. So if you take nothing else away from this video, let it be this. The two most widely accepted naming systems for ocarinas are the European system, and the Asian system. These are the most widely used classification systems in Italy, Germany, Austria, France, and in Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and mainland China. And since this whole channel is dedicated to ocarinas, I'd love to break those two systems down, starting with the European system. When the ocarina was first invented in the 1850s, the Italian maker Giuseppe Donati originally started with five, then expanded to seven ocarinas, one through seven. One being the smallest and seven being the largest. And since each ocarina could only play about half an octave, he decided to tune them in fifths to compensate for the range, starting with C or Do, and then G or Sol. Do 1, Sol 2, Do 3, Sol 4, etc. Now what's interesting is that Donati's original intention wasn't for the ocarina to be played as a solo instrument, but within an ensemble or an ocarina septet, so they were all meant to be played at the same time. And the numbers on the ocarina would correspond to the player's position within the ensemble, so the melodies within the piece would typically be played by first and second ocarina, followed by the inner harmonies and counter melodies played by three, four, and five, and then lastly the bass continual part played by sixth and seven, and this is what that sounds like. So after nearly 170 years, this system is still being used by ocarina makers in Italy, France, Austria, and Germany, the countries where the ocarina is most popular within Europe, hence the name, the European system. And again, it's important not to get the names within this system confused with the pitches on the piano. For example, C1 is very low on the piano, but C1 within this septet is at the top of the family. Now onto the Asian system, and just a fair warning, this history is a little more complicated, so bear with me, I'm gonna to try to condense it as much as I can. In the late 1800s, a German musician by the name of Heinrich Fein decided to make his own ocarina set after being inspired by one of these Italian septet performances. And he decides to make ocarinas in every size and key imaginable. So not only did he replicate the Italian septet, those initial seven ocarinas, but all these sizes and keys in between them, totaling to over 20 ocarinas in his collection. I actually own a lot of them, they're back here. Now obviously this doesn't line up with the European system anymore because that only accounts for the seven ocarina. So he decides to use that idea of numbering each ocarina in his set, starting with one being the smallest and 21 being the largest. And he also stamps the key of each ocarina on the mouthpiece. Now by the 1890s, ocarinas are gaining in popularity all over Europe, and here comes Fane trying to shake things up with his own huge naming system and trying to figure out how to market outside of Europe, especially to the United States. And he realizes there's probably an easier way to categorize all of his ocarinas, so he decides to use SATB, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, except he leaves out tenor. It's just SAB. We don't know why. He just did. Oh, and he added a contrabass. So he starts marketing to the USA with this new classification system, and it works. The ocarina blows up, everybody loves it. Soldiers and kids especially, because it's super portable. And because soldiers love them, eventually it makes it over to Japan post-World War I. And by the 1970s, there are several prominent Japanese ocarina makers all using Fane's system, because they discovered it 
through Fane. Except since nobody is crazy enough to make over 20 different sized ocarinas, they decided to condense the classification system to just these, using the abbreviations for soprano, alto, and bass, along with the tuning of the ocarina, both on the mouthpiece. So soprano C, soprano G, soprano F, alto C, alto G, alto F, bass C, bass G, bass F, and then contra bass C. This system has been in use for over 50 years throughout Asia, including in Japan, Taiwan, mainland China, and South Korea, which brings us back to STL Ocarina. STL started out as a distributor for TNG Ocarina, one of the largest Ocarina manufacturers in Taiwan, and they still contract TNG Ocarina to even make their custom models that they offer on their website. And how does TNG classify their Ocarinas? They use the Asian system, and yet STL still continues to ignore this, or at least partially ignore this. Let's look at their website. So we're gonna look at some of the ocarinas STL has here on their website, specifically at the ones directly from TNG, not the ones that STL contracts TNG to make on their behalf. So here we have a Soprano C ocarina. It's what STL confirms it to be called. And you can see on the mouthpiece, it has an SC for Soprano C. Here we have a Bass C ocarina. Again, STL confirms us the name of it here, along with the mouthpiece BC for Bass C. So what does STL call their Alto C ocarinas. Here we have a Alto C ocarina. You can look at the mouthpiece. It has an AC. They call it a tenor. Let's look at another one. Here again, you have a tenor ocarina with an AC on the mouthpiece for Alto C. One more. Here again is an Alto C ocarina with an AC on the mouthpiece. STL calls it a tenor. This is extremely confusing for a lot of people. Over the last decade, I've gotten so many people asking about where they can find tenor ocarinas. They can't find tenor ocarinas except for on STL's website, and this is why. And while I am pointing out mainly STL in this video, I have to say that there are smaller ocarina makers who do choose to name their own collections by a different naming system. And this is what STL decided to do as well. They were originally just a music school and they wanted to do this as a side business, selling ocarinas, starting off with a soprano C, soprano F, and an alto C. And so they just decided to call them soprano, alto, and tenor, just to show the difference within their own collection. It makes sense. The difference is that while some small makers still choose to use their own naming system, STL is now the most widely recognized and publicized ocarina company here in the West. And what they say about the instrument has an impact. And while I appreciate STL's efforts in getting the ocarina into schools and the education system, as well as putting the ocarina in the hands of amazing musicians like Gina, by not joining the larger ocarina companies and agreeing on a classification system, I think they're harming the ocarina in the long run. By making it more confusing for beginners just trying to find the right ocarina for themselves, as well as for professionals and educators trying to figure out how to utilize this instrument in the classroom and in recording sessions. In conclusion, if you're still watching this video, it's obvious that like me, you care about the ocarina and the community that's been built around it. So I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Should STL continue to use their own naming system for their ocarinas, or should they adopt one of these classification systems used by ocarina makers around the world? Personally, I think it would be a little too complicated to adopt the European system at this point, so I would just like them to fully commit to the Asian system. And if you agree, I have put some contact info for STL Ocarina in the description below, so you can shoot them an email, shoot them a DM or a tweet, and just say, please consider using the same naming systems that other Ocarina makers use around the world. You can even use this nifty JPEG I made. And that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching with a very special thank you to all of my patrons for supporting informative videos like this. If you'd like to support me in this channel as well, definitely check out the Patreon link in the description below, where you can also download all the MP3s, backtracks, and sheet music for my music videos and a whole bunch of other goodies. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribed and hit that notification bell so you know whenever I post a new video. And until that next video, I hope you guys have an amazing week.